questions for you today, Josh. Um, from I know that you have run few uh, research this year, especially uh, this and last year when we went through the um, uh, the COVID and um, uh, travels uh, were were shut down. Um, and those surveys have an interesting uh, provide an interesting perspective. So, from your standpoint uh, um, in your research. What are travelers with disabilities feeling about their travel at this time? Are they eager to travel? Uh, I think it's a very uh, broad question when we look across kind of the uh, the demographics of perhaps the disabled community. You could argue uh, there's those that have more severe uh, uh, requirements so obviously they would have had a larger impact on COVID and I think you know our research found that uh, ultimately it was down to people's risk appetite as to whether or not they want to travel based on their individual circumstances. There were clearly quite a lot of profound um, risks or issues that you know the, the community themselves had and actually they were all very similar so things like close proximity flying particularly within the cabin um, looking at whether the air was kind of circulated and did it help keep clean air within the cabin, things like going through the airport security, you know, it was kind of all of this close proximity side of things of being close to staff. So if, for instance, a passenger needs support being lifted on an, op, an aircraft, that of course breaks the two metre social distancing rule. Um, and there were other areas of so things with like people with visual impairments, they may use like a ramble tag to support them through the airport. Uh, which is basically a device that goes around the arms so special assistants can kind of guide them through the airport. Uh, and there was other things that were raised as well. So it was important for those within the, the hearing community uh, to have assistant staff with clear visors so that they were able to kind of read their lips. And so there was a whole raft of stuff that we identified that the industry could implement that would kind of have a uh, an immediate effect in supporting passengers that wished to travel kind of during these times. Um, but actually, when we look uh, at those that have traveled since COVID, actually, there's been a fairly positive experience um, flying during the pandemic because of the, the uh, extra safety measures that have kind of been put in place. And actually, it seems to be a much more relaxed environment now because there's less people traveling. And so, you know, there's not there's not many people running from A to B providing assistance. So it was quite interesting that actually, in some respects, people see kind of this slower paced environment being a positive when it comes to actually delivering a good uh, customer service. So, yeah, it's very interesting, the research that we found. Thank you. And um, in some countries, we are already moving to the restart of the air travels. So. Um, IATA has run an investigation recently where we um, we want to to know that tra uh, travelers actually are keen to restart traveling. Um, what about the disability community? What do you think? Uh, would they be able or would they be keen to restart traveling as soon as uh, it is permitted? Oh, that's a good question. I think when we look in the UK, for instance, it, it very much depends on where and when government are kind of advising people to travel at the moment. Uh, you know, it's clear that people are willing to travel to amber countries. Um, obviously, there's associated risk with quarantining and the costs associated with that. But I think generally, a lot of the those that, uh, according to UK government, that are cl critically vulnerable, a lot of those people have kind of been double vaccinated now. And so I think a lot of a lot of people feel more confident going out into the community. Uh, but what was very interesting is I had a conversation with someone not so long ago and they mentioned that actually because people haven't been out for so long, there's kind of this apprehension of not knowing what it's going to be like to travel. And actually what we need is staff to be more understanding and supportive of the fact that people have been kind of secluded and not been able to go out, that actually traveling again is a very big step for people regardless if they have traveled in the past or not, and just actually to be mindful um, and supportive of these passengers when they start returning to air travel again. So basically don't put too much pressure on them um, is what we're saying. Um, but also there could be the kind of this 
overarching pent up demand where we could all of a sudden see, for instance, the UK government say green lights all the way and all of a sudden we've got loads of passengers flying. The expectation would be that airports are going to keep some of these measures in place in terms of uh, two metre distancing rules within the airport. Um, you know, these restrictions are probably going to remain potentially in place. And so how does that then affect kind of people traveling through the airport that require assistance if we've got loads of demand, but these rules staying in place, is there going to be space? Is it going to cause an environment for people that say perhaps have kind of sensory or cognitive um, circumstances that could actually be triggers to cause them to say, actually, maybe I don't want to travel because, you know, the environment is going to be so chaotic that perhaps maybe it's not a good time for me to go. So. I mean, it's so broad. It, it, it's open to so many different interpretations of people's circumstances. But I think on the whole, I think we're, we're going to see um, a lot of people returning back to travel. And I think the aviation industry as a whole um, has done quite a lot to kind of address most of those concerns that the, the community have. Um, of course, more information is better. Um, but I think that, you know, as, as an industry as a whole, I don't think so much that the challenges uh, that need to be done right now are so focused on accessibility. I think it's actually the wider variables with governments and you know the restarts happening and where do people want to travel that are really going to be kind of the, um, the the calling points at the moment, I think, for when people start to travel again. In the industry, we say that we want to build for world and we want to be better. As we rebuild, what would be the recommendation that you have for the industry, what we should do to build for world better for everyone? I think the first, well, although it may seem very hard, actually, I think it's to continue investing in accessibility. I think, you know, we, we've seen a lot of very good people in the industry go uh, because of the impact of COVID and we need those skills back. And so what we actually need to be doing very quickly is is educating. And I think one of the biggest things is uh, enhanced disability training to staff. I think, you know, we we really need to see more of that and consistency. We do a lot of it now, but it's going to be more important than ever because of all of the good people that we've actually lost. So I think that's one of the, the bigger things. Um, I'd also like to see uh, some other bits around um, uh, we in the UK, we've got changing places toilets going out at UK airports, and they're really changing the way in in which you know people travel because it provides it provides the ability to go to the toilet. And what we don't see enough of is this across the globe. We're only ever slowly seeing it in the in the US, but not really anywhere else. And so I think there needs to be a push on that. I also think uh, when it comes to hidden disabilities, we need to be pushing for the regulators to add more requirements or criteria for those with hidden disabilities to provide more protection. It's very old. It seems to be very focused on the mobility side of things. And whilst the mobility is still very, very important, I think more needs to be added sooner rather than later uh, for the hidden and invisible disabilities. So I think that's definitely something we can do um, uh, sooner rather than later. I'd also like to see continued progress on digital accessibility. Uh, we, we've actually, I think we've advanced our digital accessibility because of COVID and we've tried to make things, we've tried to rely on technology more to remove some of those physical touch points within an airport. And often when we put stuff online without understanding the disabled community, we can often exclude unintentionally and so we need to get better at providing different forms of um, accessibility digitally. Um, and that can be, um, for instance, just as basic as putting alt text on images to um, providing more information about the measurements of, say, inside a cabin, for instance. So how big is the seat pitch for somebody to have a look at on the website? Or it could be how big is the toilet in the airport? So all of these types of things we need to be improving on. Uh, and also, I would probably say that one of the things that is coming uh, in the future um, is more advancements of technology within the cabin. Uh, and 
I went back to my earlier point around uh, including the disabled community in the in kind of the design process. And what we need to be doing is encouraging airlines and aircraft manufacturers to liaise with the community about, OK, so what is it are we going to be putting in the cabin in the future? You know, Bluetooth enablement so you can order and buy stuff on, on the aircraft with your, your phone, perhaps. Um, and what is the impact of that going to be on, say, uh, those with cognitive or um, visual impairments? And so we really need to be looking further down the line because we know that's coming. And so just again, I think we need to make sure that we're, we're kind of looking forward rather than just the restart. And whilst the restart is important, actually, the next five to 10 years is just as important as now, if not even more important. When are you going to travel next and where are you going? Oh, where am I going next? Uh, I, I definitely probably end up going to Spain. I think I could definitely do with a, a beach holiday in Spain. Um, although I've not been to Italy, Linda, uh, it's definitely somewhere I'd like to go, but apparently it's not all that accessible. Um, but maybe maybe I might go to uh, maybe to Italy, perhaps if I'm feeling confident enough, um, but just somewhere sunny.